We can configure multi-scale gradient correction to work with the official Mars databases or with a reference image. If we want to use the Mars databases, we need to check this box and add the Mars files. At the moment, the files available are Data Release 1 of Mars and of Mars U. The Mars U data is made up of user-contributed images and the first data release includes a small set of selected areas of the sky covering a large part of the winter Milky Way and the center of the galaxy. The Mars DR1 dataset includes half of the northern celestial hemisphere. To load the database, click on Open and the file will appear in the list. If we reset now, the file will disappear from the list. So that we don't have to keep looking for the files we want, we can open the Preferences menu and add the files that we want to load by default. So, if we select the database in this window here, now all we need to do is click on the Default Files button. Multi-scale gradient correction works by comparing the structures in the image we want to correct with the structures in the reference images. The aim is to cancel out the signal from the object so that all we're left with is the gradient structures. But to be able to do that, we need to know how bright the objects in our image are and how their brightness compares with that of the objects in the reference images. So, before we execute MGC, we must always calibrate the image flux. If you're using a wide field reference image instead of the official databases, you'll also need to calibrate the flux of that reference image. We can do the flux calibration using spectrophotometric flux calibration, which is in the image calibration category. SPFC is configured in a similar way to SPCC. First, we select the quantum efficiency curve and the filters. There are four fields for the filters, including a gray filter for when we're working on a monochrome image. If, for example, we're using a set of LRGB filters, we don't need to change the configuration of the RGB filters in order to apply the flux calibration to the L image. Let's execute the process. Using the astrometric solution, SPFC finds the Gaia stars and compares their brightness in the image with the brightness listed in the catalog. Once the process has finished, we get three graphs, one for each color channel. On the y-axis, we have the scale factor calculated in the comparison. The curves always have two tails. At these two extremes are stars with anomalous brightness ratios. They might be variable stars, for example or they might be stars with extreme colors that are affected by the equipment used or the atmospheric conditions. The tool detects the range corresponding to stars that behave normally and uses only those values in order to obtain a robust average. This results in a more accurate flux calibration. Once we've calibrated the flux, we can apply the gradient correction. Multi-scale gradient correction can be found in the Gradient Correction section. In most cases, the default values will provide decent results. In the next videos, we'll look more closely at how to achieve optimum results. When we execute MGC, it searches the database for images that contain the field in the image we're correcting. In this case, there is only one image in the database that covers the field. If there were more than one, MGC would integrate them all. By doing this, it uses all the data available in the database to generate a more reliable reference. By default, MGC displays the gradient model it has generated. It will usually look posterized because gradients are very smooth structures. To see it properly, we need to increase the STF precision to 24 bits. Here is the corrected image, 
and this is the original image with the horizontal gradient. We're now going to correct the gradients in this image, which has a greenish background in the bottom right and a reddish background in the top left. First, we calibrate the image flux, and now we can do the gradient correction with MGC. In this case, the database contains seven images per channel that cover the field we want to correct. Some of them have been ignored. This is because the coverage of the reference images is analyzed after they've been reprojected. Because the reference images are wide field images, they have very significant distortions and their borders are actually curved. Once they've been reprojected, if they don't cover the entire target image, they are rejected. So here we're integrating five reference images in each channel to achieve a higher signal to noise ratio. The two gradients have been corrected perfectly, and even the halo around the bright star has been partially corrected. In some cases, even when we've calibrated the color previously with SPCC, we'll need to adjust the sky background level after the gradient correction. We do this with background neutralization as usual. We select an area of the sky background and set it as the region of interest. And here we have the corrected image. Mm -hmm.